Hi there, this is Angie Carpenter, Town of Islip Supervisor, and welcome to this edition of Supervisor Spotlight. In the studio with us today here at Long Island MacArthur Airport, we have someone who is very much a part of what happens here every single day, and that's Joe Modica, who is the manager. Uh, he is with TSA, and he's going to tell us all about TSA. So right off the bat, I know, tell everybody, TSA stands for? Transportation Security Administration. Okay. And you are the manager here, right? I'm a Transportation Security uh, Manager at MacArthur. Right. Yeah. At Long Island MacArthur. Yep. Town of Islip's Long Island MacArthur. So tell me, um, I mean, everybody's familiar with TSA. They know they come here. They've got to take their shoes off. They've got to go through a line. But we all know it's more than that. You know, you are really protecting the security of our country. If you think about it, well, the TSA is of, of plays a vital role in national security. Um, the agency was developed after September 11th. Um, we originally uh, started underneath the um, Federal um, Aviation Administration on the Department of uh, mm -hmm. Transportation, and uh, the FAA used to um, were responsible for security and safety mm -hmm. after September 11th, and, and with the um, uh, initiation of the TSA we we took over security FAA kept safety and as we um, developed into an agency we became part of uh, Department of Homeland Security and it's interesting you know in the scheme of things your agency is relatively young very young you know what 15 16 years 16. Um, and yet it seems like you've always been there and what would it have been like I can't I can't remember what it was like before TSA well, I started with TSA right from the early onset. I was in the original rollout of the agency, mm -hmm. and um, we were part of the mobile screening force. And what we did was we federalized airports, and we airports were, the screening and the security elements of the airports were done by private contractors. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not going to criticize what was in place before the TSA was here because it was what. Um, what, what the industry felt was necessary right. but unfortunately with September 11th we realized it wasn't the enough. World, we've said it so many times the world changed right. after September 11th. So when we federalized airports we came in with all, all our managers and supervisors we we relieved the contractors of their duties and we took over screening operations um, from its onset uh, from that point forward until they hired the, the, the federal employees. Mm -hmm. I could tell you that uh, aviation security has been in drastically improved and it continues to improve. Mm -hmm. um, we, when we took over screening at the airports um, from the private security, the equipment was dated. Um, the they were really, um, there was no procedures. The employees were, um, had, uh, uh, I, I don't want to criticize them, but they didn't have uh, uh, background check. There was no citizenship requirements. There was, there was no, when TSA came in, we we brought in all new equipment. The equipment state of the art. We don't wait wait for equipment to wear out before we replace mm -hmm. it. We replace it when state of the art new equipment comes out. Yeah, we we see that here even at our airport, Long Island MacArthur Airport, a regional airport. Certainly not anything like JFK or LaGuardia, but you see that you know the equipment is not just adequate it is state of the art state of the art you know and it has to have been exciting for you to be there from the beginning to roll out the agency as you said um give me a little bit about your background so how does one say yeah hey, joe motive you're the guy we want to help roll it out and set up oh, well i started um my professional career as a new york city police officer i retired in um uh, 2001, right after September 11th, mm -hmm. I was one of the first responders uh, that uh, at the Trade Center. Um, I retired out of a major case narcotics division um, after 20 years of service. It was a great de department, I had a great career, um, and I stepped into. I, I got very lucky because TSA was a brand new agency yeah, developing, yeah. and I got in at the, basically the ground floor. And someone with your background is such a plus. Um, you know? I, I would like to think so. And well, and, uh, I know so. How's that? <laughs> And uh, you know, yes, it, it, it is. It was uh, um, an experience to be part of a, a brand new agency from 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 the beginning and seeing it develop to what it is now. And it is a top notch uh, counterterrorism um, organization. But we're not in it alone, Angie. And you know firsthand 
uh, we're a partner in this. And, and I'm airport, so glad you said that. You uh, know. The town of Islip, yeah. and, you know, mm-hmm. and this is my area of responsibility. So I'll speak about the town of Islip and the relationships that we have with um, the airport commissioner here, Shelley LaRose and Rob Schneider, yourself, um, the, Suffolk, uh, the Long Island MacArthur Police, the Suffolk County Police, mm-hmm. Chief Cameron, that's what makes the security posture at Islip so, uh, Long Island MacArthur Airport so, so uh, strong. Um, it's just the cooperation that we have and the partnership that we have with our, with our stakeholders. Well, you know, I think 9-11 taught us all, uh, if you didn't know it before, you can't do it alone. No. You know, especially in security, in s- especially in protecting the health and welfare of the public. Uh, it takes all agencies working together. There's got to be that communication. And I learned that early on. I mean, I uh, was involved in government. I mean, prior to, I owned and ran a business. But when I got involved in government about 25 years ago, um, part of my legislative district was Fire Island. Mm-hmm. And every month, now this is going back 25 years ago, we had the Fire Island Law Enforcement and Safety Council. And every single month we met and it was the New York State Park Police, it was the Ocean Beach Police, it was Suffolk County Marine Bureau, it was the Aviation Unit, it was Fire Island National Seashore, the local village security, the fire departments, anyone that had a role to play um, in representing the public and protecting the public would come together every single month. And the relationships developed over those years to me was a model and who knew, fast forward to 9-11, that that, you know, now has become the model. You know, there are drills, incident drills, and tabletops, joint, joint, and joint all drills. of these things, joint terrorism task force, and everything else pulling people together. So, um, you know, having you in place here and knowing that the relationships are so solid with all of the uh, agencies. They are, Andrew. We meet mul- monthly with the FBI, Customs, uh, Suffolk County Police. We, we, we develop relationships. We don't meet each other when we need each other. We know each other before an incident happens. Um, the cooperation between all the agencies is absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm very lucky to work at this location with the partners that I have, um, security partners that I have uh, in Suffolk County. You know, you said it. Uh, you know the players and when people you know hear about the meetings that you have and the drills and, and all it might seem like overkill but it's not because the players change you know people are out they retire or they move on to a different career but in having that consistency and having people meet on a regular basis you know who the players are so God forbid when there is you know, an incident, a tragedy, a storm, you know, a Sandy, you know, you can pick up the phone and you know who's going to be on the other end because you can meet with them. We don't only do the the exercises with the security partners, we do them with the stakeholders, the the concession stands, the, yep. the, the air carriers. They need to understand what what's happening in, 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 in as far as the security posture of the airport. So if they understand that they'll be more receptive to report things to cooperate to because they're the airport community is a very solid community and they know what's going on exactly and where they work and that's important too you know and i'm glad you mentioned that so it could be somebody working in the concession and all of a sudden they get a bad vibe on someone that came up to get coffee you know they pass that information on that's invaluable and i know in the town we have and we utilize that that rubric, if you will, uh, our park rangers, they're on 24-7. There are eyes and ears out there all of the time, you know. And I tell the guys in the parks department or, or DPW, when you're driving by and you see something that doesn't look right, I'm not talking about just a pothole, but if you pass a house and, and something doesn't look right, you're out, you know, we have 1,200 miles of road you know, in the, in the town, and they're out there. So anyway, we're going to have to take a break. Okay. I can't believe that went really quick. And uh, we will be back in a few moments with Joe Modica of, T at, of the TSA here at Long Island MacArthur Airport.
Welcome back to Supervisor Spotlight. This is Angie Carpenter, Town of Islip Supervisor, in the studios here at Long Island MacArthur Airport with our special guest today, Joe Modica of TSA at Islip Airport. So we talked a little bit about, you know, how the agency evolved, and it's it's fairly new in, in government uh, post-9-11, and uh, the incredible job they do here. Um, but, you know, besides the professional job that you do with the state-of-the-art equipment and everything, there's a difference. And I'm sorry for those who are at, you know, JFK or LaGuardia. It's not a smack at them, but... The fact of the matter remains that we hear it all the time about the positive customer experience at Long Island MacArthur Airport. And from the very beginning, when people set foot in the airport and they walk up to that TSA, you know, that first person that's there that asks for their documents and he or she has a smile on their face and tells them to have a nice trip or a good day, and there's a whole different vibe here. And we really, really appreciate it because as we're trying to grow the airport, the thing that really strikes everyone and no one can can challenge our customer experience. So, you know, Angie, I, 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 I'd love to take full credit um, for that experience, but I think it starts at at the front door of the airport. You know, it really does. I mean, it's, it's a, you're right, and I'm not beating up our Cat X, uh, Category X airports. Um, this is a, a smaller airport. It's a it's it's manageable. The airport experience here is 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 very user friendly to the to the the traveler. Um, the parking is better. The by the time they get to the checkpoint, they're relaxed. Um, exactly. We do, they haven't been racing right. to find a spot or yeah. You know, the, yeah. The, 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 you know, planes take off on time. They land on time, and by the time they get to us, they're comfortable. Um, I do hold the officers that work for me accountable, and I believe customer service is important. I mean, we are screening people. We are going through their belongings. We're doing pat downs. Uh, we're you know searching their bags. Um, we're removing items that at the checkpoint that are that are prohibited from the sterile area, meaning a, you know small knives, sharp items, tools, um, certain liquids, peanut gels, butter. peanut butter. Of That's course. personal. I'll tell you about that. <laughs> and uh, you know, but you have to do that in a dignified, professional mm-hmm. way. And um, I believe that you know by holding our folks accountable and letting them know that the folks that are traveling through here, you know, they're only trying to get from point A to point B safely, and and you can't carry out our mission with uh, the attitude that you know we're dealing with bad people we're not we're dealing with a lot of good people thank goodness and uh, you know we just have to do our job professionally knowing that the people we deal with are just our neighbors our family members our loved ones you know and and it's a little bit more personal I, lo- I watch the officers down at the checkpoint they're on first name basis with the pilots and the mm-hmm. crew and it, they see the same travelers we have a lot of snowbirds uh, that come through on almost a regular basis so they, they do know um, that they do get uh, on a in, on a more intimate level at this airport than you really can at a, a larger airport. But you know, uh, fostering that sense of these are good people coming through, they're traveling, what have you, if they inadvertently, and I'll share my peanut butter story, um, I was away and was in a supermarket and found this peanut butter that was reduced fat that I couldn't find at home. So I buy it, I put it in my suitcase, I don't think anything of it. And I get there and they go, you know, ask me about it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, <laughs> I don't have anything. And do you have soda in there? And I'm like, no. And, and then we opened the suitcase and he found the peanut butter. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't even think about it. You know, and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's going in the garbage. <laughs> well, but know. in any event, um, I understood, you know, but it, you know, people are not necessarily, and the overwhelming majority, you know, do things innocently. And, and I say that to our folks back at Town Hall, too, you know, whether it's, you know, people who are seeking to get a building permit or what have you, uh, sometimes you just didn't realize that you needed it. So they're not really looking to game the system. They just, you know, really didn't know. And sometimes it's up to us to get that information out and, and there. 
Angie, that's a fantastic point. We have a great website. It's tsa.gov, mm-hmm. and it has everything and anything you need to know about traveling. Listen, our best, pa- the best passenger that I could see is the invisible passenger, meaning they did everything correctly. They divested all of their, um, uh, you know, all of their uh, medals, their mm-hmm. items in their pockets. They packed correctly. They dressed correctly, meaning they don't have, uh, you know, studded uh, clothes on that are mm-hmm. going to alarm some of our equipment. Um, a passenger that can navigate the screening checkpoint without creating, uh, without causing us to have to do additional screening is the perfect passenger. Because our focus isn't on the average passenger. It's, we're looking for the person looking to circumvent screening. We're looking for the bad guy trying to you know, sneak a, uh, an IED or a weapon or, or, or an incinerary into the airport uh, or onto a, or a plane. And the good guys, those of us that are, you know, might be traveling, want you to get the bad right. guy. Correct. We don't want to think, you know. And, and I think for the most part, people are comfortable and they feel safe and secure and that's a good thing uh but by the same token we want them to be aware and that that see something say something if something doesn't look right you know it might not be the 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 uh, there are programs and you know, we have the pre-check program which i think is an outstanding if you're a frequent flyer and you should register for the pre-check. It's eighty-five dollars. It's it. What it does is TSA uh, utilizes a risk-based approach to screening. It allows um, low-risk passengers to experience expedited screening, and basically they're going to give additional information. T- they register online or at one of the uh, registration centers, and they'll give the TSA additional information that you normally wouldn't give when you buy an airplane ticket. Mm-hmm. And you'll submit yourself to f- you'll also submit your fingerprints. That information is not shared. It's and what happens is once you clear the pre-check program, you're a low-risk passenger. You get you get a more expedited screening process, mm-hmm. and it gives the TSA the ability to focus on passengers that we know that we know less about. So you said it was eighty-five dollars, but tell everyone that's good for. Is it five years, four um, years? I, I don't remember. I believe it's good for four years. Okay, so it's four years. So oh, I'm sorry, five years. You're okay, correct. Okay, so five years. So it's less than 20 bucks, you know, a year. And if you're traveling even once or twice, it's it's kind of worth it to get to that it TSA speeds up. pre-check. It, 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 it's, Absolutely. The lines are much faster, mm-hmm. and it's a really good perk at a CADEX airport. And TSA has come here to our airport to do that. Correct. We had an so enrollment that, center yep, locally. Yep. And we've done that a number of times, and hopefully we'll be doing that, you know. And we also do the known crew out. member program at um, Long Island MacArthur Airport, where crew members who pass, again, an additional security uh, check, um, they get registered in the known crew member program, and they would then bypass, completely bypass screening after they present uh, their uh, known crew member ID. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a fantastic program. Again, it gives us the ability to focus on on passengers that we know less about. Yeah. And, you know, to the credit of the management here at the airport now, this is not something that was there before. No. Uh, And uh, we thank you for your assistance in making sure that we were able to do that because the crew comes through. You know, if they can do it at other airports and they can't do it at our airport, then there's got to be a feeling like, oh, I'm at that airport now. Now, But for them to feel accommodated like that gives them a better sense of of our airport. With both programs, Mm -hmm. you can be pulled out of that program out of that program and then subjected to regular screening there is a if randomness yep. not if there's a reason it could it's a it's a randomness so it, the, the, the the one of the better uh, elements of screening is it's 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 unpredictability so you mm-hmm. don't know if because I'm pre-check I'm always going to be pre-check gotcha. so you can go through regular screening and on a random basis the the, the, the current airport um, manager has done a lot of things i mean the the state-of-the-art video surveillance system um the perimeter roadway i mean i've seen some fantastic changes under the current administration and and thanks to you and and uh, shelly larose well it certainly has been a focus for us here at the airport and uh, again i i thank you for you know your team and, and the great job they do in helping keep that experience good Uh, We will be back in a few moments um, after a little bit of a break uh, to talk about uh, the past couple of weeks here at the airport and TSA in particular. So stay with us. Angie Carpenter, Town of Islip Supervisor.
Hi, this is Town Advice Supervisor Angie Carpenter here at the airport with our Supervisor Spotlight. And today we have with us Joe Modica, who is the head of TSA here at the airport. And uh, we've talked about the agency and how it got started and, and some of the intricacies of, of what the screeners do here and how important it is uh, to have them do what they do in the professional kind of caring way that they do it. But uh, we've had some exciting uh, times here the past couple of weeks with the government shutdown, uh, the end of the year and the beginning of the new year. Uh, it sort of gave an opportunity for Town of Islip residents and Long Island residents as a whole to show how wonderful they really are and how much they really care because there was an absolute outpouring of support for these TSA workers here who weren't getting their paycheck, yet they were coming to work. And unlike other areas of the country and other um, agencies, these folks were here and uh, we never had an interruption because of a slowdown or anything. So, Joe, tell us about some of the things that happened. I mean, we were here with the commissioner, but it was like almost a parade of people. Well, I just want to start off by saying I'm extremely pleased that everyone at TSA is back and we're returning to normal operations following the passage of the uh, continuing resolution that was signed last Friday night. Um, it was a, 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 a tough a tough stretch for us sure. um, I've got a uh, you know um, it was un, it was an unprecedented event for the TSA as an agency and for the in individuals during these extraordinary times there was an unwavering commitment of mis mission uh, as you said we had the 90 folks that work for me um, were not getting paid uh, they weren't getting the check uh, during this uh, shutdown yet they still came. We did not have a crazy amount of call-outs. Uh, we didn't experience any slowdowns, shut, uh, any shutdown of, or, or dis disruption in flights. Um, they're committed to mission. That's simple as that. I mean, it, and, and other security sense of employees in the government are also came in to ensure that we maintain the highest level of security. I mean, our job is not a joke. I mean, people are getting on oh, airplanes sure. and yep. they trust us Absolutely. that they're going to get to their destination. Um, as an agency, we benefited greatly from the generosity of local politicians, namely you, Angie Carpenter. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, and I, I think what Joe's referring to, the commissioner and I, uh, and I don't know how it came about, uh, decided to do breakfast one morning and she got the bagels, I got the donuts, and we of course cleared it with Joe to make sure that it was okay and uh, the deputy commissioner was here too. And it kind of started a uh, an avalanche of... Uh, a, a, a true avalanche. You know, and <laughs> chief of department, Suffolk County Police Department, Stu Cameron, who is an absolute gem and he has an affinity for the airport. He worked here, uh, he works with us now, but uh, he was here one day and uh, he kind of checked if it was okay if he brought lunch in one day. He wanted to do a little something. But I thought what, what was so great when we were here that morning and the county executive came down too, um, when Stu talked about the fact that when he went into the pizzeria and ordered all of these pies and they kind of looked at him and he said he was there in uniform and they're like, uh, you know, what's going on? And so when he told them, what he was buying the pies for, the guy asked him if he could wait a few minutes and he threw in a whole big vat of uh, garlic knots. Mm -hmm. he, he wanted to do a little something. So it was just, and the stories, and, and please share some of them, well, it's incredible. I, I wanna back up with Stu. I, I know Stu Cameron for about 17 years now, uh, and Stu is truly an outstanding uh, chief of department He's and incredible. A, an outstanding individual. Um, he was at the airport about a, a week before the pizza incident and he asked how my folks were doing. He truly cared. Absolutely. And uh, I said, they're doing good. I said, he goes, can I go down to the checkpoint and talk to them? And he went with a department chaplain and, and approached each TSO, Transportation Security Officer, and individually thanked each one of them for coming into work. He understood their hardship, and he wholeheartedly said, as the chief of Suffolk County Police Department, that he appreciates what they're doing 
uh, by working without paying and protecting. And he's talking from the heart. From I mean, the heart. He is just not saying And then it. after he, we left, I thanked it. him. Because, Angie, when, I think that the TSOs, that's what got them through the 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 uh, thirty some odd days that yes, we weren't getting paid, and it wasn't uh, we didn't have an end in sight. It was a little bit of a surprise when when the continual resolution was signed. I think the appreciation that was shown, and I really I don't want to waste a lot of time, but I'd love to give a shout out to the group oh, of people. Oh, please do, please um, do. Uh, Angie, you and you you Shelly Larose and Rob Schneider, I appreciate what you did with the breakfast and all. We had um, the um, give me a second. I'm reading notes. I apologize. We had um, the county executive, Steve uh, Ballone, came in right. with food. You had um, Chief Cameron, as I just mentioned. Um, you had the Suffolk uh, County legislators all came in as a group. Yep. And, the, uh, and, and acknowledged the, the efforts of the screeners. Um, we, had, we had Southwest Airlines uh, donated pizza and bagels. We had HMS Host, which is the vending company. Yeah, that's the company that runs all of the concessions here. Um, the anyone who hasn't doesn't know the the Maloney family from the Maloney Funeral Homes. Uh, Pete and Dan came in and were extremely generous, generous and compassionate to the screeners. Mm -hmm. An outstanding family and just truly good people. Um, I had two passengers that I want to acknowledge we had kevin mccaffrey a retired suffolk county sheriff who showed up with food for them and truly was a good guy and barbara higgins also came in with groceries uh for the and then a numerous anonymous donors they were going up to starbucks and putting gift cards um and they were dropping off gift cards to stop and shop um some of those cards we couldn't use and I still have them. And what I'm going to do with those, I'd like to re-donate those to Long Island Cares. That would be great. Because um, Long Island Cares. They stepped up. They, they stepped really up did. also. Mm -hmm. And there's two other, a couple of comp uh, organiz uh, uh, businesses in, in Islip that o made an offer. I was going to let them come and bring stuff. But the, thank goodness the shutdown was over. We had Chico's Deli and Ron Conkema wanted to come in. And, and, but we had a because once we got paid, right, I had to turn right, away, right. them away. Gino's Pizza in Ron Conkema, I had to ask him. And we had um, Rich from uh, Rolling Smoke. Uh, it's a barbecue truck. They also have a business down on Portions Road. Um, wanted to come in and give the screeners money. So I had to, and, and it, I literally had to beat them away with and, a stick. And we, too, we had calls at the yeah. office. And uh, Steve Castleton, a uh, shout Steve out to Castleton, him. Steve Castleton, yep. He was, you know, all set to come in with gift baskets and, and gift cards, you and know, Steve yesterday. And Steve and I spoke, and I said, yeah. I have these gift cards that we didn't use. Yep. I don't think it's right for us to use them after we were right, made whole right. again. So I said, is there somebody in Long Island? Steve was the one who suggested we donate them to Long Island Care. Yeah, a great, he's, a great he's charity. He's a great guy. Yep, he does so, a lot. He really does. So you know, but the public I, support from 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 the passengers, the industry, the community, and 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 the local po and politicians, you know, underscores the importance of TSA's work in securing the aviation. Uh, it, 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 it was true testament, and they felt appreciated and they needed that. Yeah, you know, I often say this: uh, the town of Islip is the third largest town in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. You know, we have three hundred thirty-five thousand residents, if not more. Uh, 1,200 miles of roadway, you know, our entire south coast is on the, the water, the bay, or the ocean, and it's a big place. But there is such a sense of, of hometown and people caring for one another. I was at the East Islip Legion last night, and two companies stepped up to the plate because the American Legion was having trouble with their heating system, and like many legions, uh, you know, they don't have the resources. These guys stepped up paid for the equipment, paid for the labor, and put a brand new heating system in. So a shout out to Gary of East Islip Chamber and the Legion and everybody involved there in those two businesses. Um, but that's what we're all about here on Long Island. And Joe, we are so glad that you came with, into the studio today and Thank you that your team is here making us all feel safe when hopefully we have an opportunity to travel to some warm, sunny places from Islip MacArthur Airport. So again, I thank you for being here and thank you for watching and listening to Supervisor Spotlight.